Hello, welcome to another vlog. This one is uh, another story time vlog. Um, so I had asked if anybody had any questions on my last story time vlog where I talked about what brought me to Germany. It was kind of the very short version. Um, I mean, I would say that like the medium length version. It wasn't that short, but it also wasn't very detailed either. I skimmed over a lot of details. And so one person asked me, how is it that you came to be a YouTuber? And I realized that's kind of a funny story too. So this is my next story time, is how I became a YouTuber. Um, oh, where should I start? I think I should start with when I began decorating cakes because that was kind of the beginning even though I was very far away from starting a YouTube channel at that point. Um, so I had always been interested in baking. I've always liked baking. I usually made things that tasted good but didn't necessarily look pretty. Um, I made a lot of cookies and pies. Those were my favorite things to make. But once again, tasted great, didn't look that great. Um, but I didn't really care at the time. And then I had my daughter, my first daughter, Sabrina. You see her on here sometimes. Uh, and it came close to her first birthday. And I realized, you know, I'm a decent baker. I, I should be able to make her birthday cake. And I wanted to learn how to decorate it so that I could always make her cakes for special occasions. That was the motivation on why I started learning how to cake decorate. So I started watching YouTube. I started watching some of my favorite YouTubers and and got lots of tips from them and I was really interested in it. Uh, my first few, I, I will post a few pictures. I'm, it's a little embarrassing now to look back on. <laughs> so please be kind in the comments because um, because not only did I not know how to cake decorate very well, but I also didn't know how to take pictures. So uh, it was, it's been a learning process. <laughs> so um, yeah, but here are a few of um, my first cakes. The very first cake I ever decorated was for my daughter's first birthday. I actually had to laugh at this. It was white cake, because I really love my white cake recipe. And so I had a layer of white, and then the other layer I actually put a few drops of, I, I put a little bit of food coloring into and made it red. So I had a, a layer of white and a layer of red cake, and then in between them I put jam. And then I frosted the cake with uh, whipped cream, like stabilized whipped cream, because uh, I personally feel that that's the best frosting for small children. Um, people told me <laughs> when eating it that they are sure that the red one tasted better to them. It was the exact same recipe. <laughs> exact. <laughs> it was just all in their head because there was jam in between and so they felt like they could taste the jam mixed with the cake and then assumed that it was strawberry cake. It was very funny. Uh, it's funny how people's minds work. Um, but I realized then that the way something looks can actually affect the taste. Um, and that kind of brought me to a point where I was like, no, I want the things I make to look pretty too. And so I made a little more effort and I tried a few things out and I watched a lot of YouTube <laughs> from people who, who knew what they were talking about. One of my favorites is uh, My Cupcake Addiction who, uh, from Elise Strawn, but she unfortunately doesn't post very much anymore. But uh, I, I watched probably every single video she's ever made. Uh, that's an example of one of the YouTubers I followed. And, and there, there are quite a few out there. And I just really, really loved it. So fast forward a little bit. We uh, got to know some new people, made some new friends. And, and one of the people I met said when she first met me that she doesn't know how to bake it. She's a terrible baker. Um, and then I knew her daughter's birthday was coming up, and so I asked her, would you like me to make your daughter a birthday cake? Uh, as I said, I'd only made some fairly simple cakes, and you see, saw the pictures. But uh, she said, yeah, sure. Let me send you some pictures of what I would like. And she sent me a picture 
of a three-tiered fondant covered cake. <laughs> hmm, that was actually much, much more ambitious than I had planned on doing. I was not expecting her to ask me for something that fancy, but I thought to myself, you know what? This is my opportunity. If I'm not going to, if I'm not going to take the opportunities as they come to try new things, then I'm never going to learn new things. So let's do this. <laughs> you know, let's see if we can do this. And uh, and that was my very first tiered cake. Uh, I was kind of proud of myself by the way it turned out. I do realize looking back that I definitely made some mistakes and, and it was fairly simple as well. So I'll take, I'll go ahead and show a picture. Um, the figures are not mine, obviously. <laughs> they are uh, figures that someone had purchased and put on the cake. Uh, just for the cake, for just for the party because it was a princess theme party. So, But the cake itself is not decorated very fancy. It's really quite plain and simple. And uh, yeah, I was, uh, I was quite pleased with how it turned out and that as long as I followed each, all of the steps that I knew how to do, then it w turned out fine. And I really didn't have a problem with it. And I realized, you know, I, I really think I can do this. And of course, not all the decorations are perfect, and some of them are. It was just a hobby at this point. It was just something I did for fun. I had set up a blog because I thought other people in the same situation like me might be interested in learning what I am learning now. And so I um, started a blog. It was very boring and it didn't have very many pictures, but uh, you know, I kept me entertained and over time I got slightly better at it. I got to the point where I could take better pictures. And, um, and then something major happened. I lost my job. It's a long story and I could have fought my company, uh, not exactly wrongfully terminated, but like on the border of it, to the point where if I had fought legally, I probably could have kept it. But I knew that the conditions would no longer be acceptable to me and so I decided not to. And uh, and I got offered a decent separation and um, to the point that I did not have to work. I was technically still on the payroll for nine months that I didn't have to do anything for. Um, nine months is a long time to just sit around at home and do nothing. And uh, I, I was very sad about losing my job and I felt uh, I had a really uh, difficult time feeling like I deserved better. And my husband suggested, you know, you watch a lot of baking YouTubers. Why don't you become one? It'll give you something to do. So at that point, I said, you're right. And I have several cakes coming up. Uh, my daughter had, had two parties for her birthday, so I had two different cakes for her. And in the same week, there were twins that we knew having birthdays and I was going to make their cakes as well. So I was going to have three days of nothing but baking, basically, which doesn't happen to me very often since I just do this as a hobby. And I thought to myself, I can do that. I didn't have a video camera at the time. I had to order one. But of course, the cakes couldn't wait for the video camera to come. So I set up my computer and videotaped it with my webcam. And you can tell, by the way, the quality is horrible. <laughs> Hello, welcome to American Baker in Germany. I'm Michelle, and today we're going to make a chocolate funfetti checkerboard LML surprise cake for my daughter's fifth birthday. I'm very excited about this and I hope you enjoy what we do today. Let's go! Alright, moving on to our 10 inch layers. I probably videotaped the intro like 15 times 
and the one I ended up using is the most is the most fluent of them all, most fluid. Uh, I didn't make very many mistakes, and I just spoke, and I didn't stutter, I didn't stop, I didn't hesitate, and that's the, why I eventually used the one I did. Looking back, I was sorry I did because the background looks awful. <laughs> it took me a while to get into it, you know. And, uh, you know, I just, it was just something I had to work on. It was something I had to to work towards. After a while, I realized the audio wasn't that great, and I tried to buy microphones and get better equipment. And, you know, I mean, there are different things that I've done to try and make the quality of the videos better slowly over time. If you ever were wondering why I haven't bought nicer equipment, dude, this doesn't pay that well, in case you didn't know that. Um, it took me two full years to get monetized. <laughs> two years. Um, and I'm also buying uh, ingredients for the things that I'm making. So it's not like I have no expenses. So I'm just letting you know, if camera equipment's expensive. <laughs> I will probably eventually get something really nice, but I haven't yet because it's very expensive. And I can't really justify the expense on something that's not making me that much money. So yeah, the first, the first few videos were really, really terrible. And I look back on them and I think to myself, that's awful. <laughs> but it's okay. It's also okay because that's something you have to do as a YouTuber. If you look back on your old videos, think they're crap, and insist on deleting them, then you're never going to have any videos on your channel. And nobody's ever going to be able to see your journey. Maybe they are interested in that one tiny little tutorial you talked about separating eggs back in the day. You know, maybe they do want to watch it, even though it's two minutes long. And it's just, you, you just have to have faith that it will eventually happen. And just stick to it. If, if you love making videos, and that is your passion, and you think it's really fun, then be a YouTuber. Why not? Now, don't expect it to pay your bills, especially not all right away. Let's be honest, only the very lucky get monetized to the point that it pays their bills. So I also have another job. <laughs> I did eventually find a new job, but even as I found a new job, I realized that I didn't want to give up my YouTube channel. So I actually, in full disclosure, told my company, hey, I'm a YouTuber. Do you mind? Is that okay with you? Um, and they actually were okay with that. They said, oh, that's okay. That's okay. That's fine. Uh, as long as you don't take your camera with you to work or something. And I'm like, no, that's fine. I, I don't need to take my camera to work. But, <laughs> you know. So as far as the development of my channel has gone, I started out with using my webcam and no microphone. So the built-in microphone on my computer was the only thing I used. I began by using uh, a, like a freeware software to edit my videos. I think it was Microsoft Movie Maker, which unfortunately is no longer available. Uh, makes me kind of sad because it was really easy to use. <laughs> it really was. So, um, but it did have a couple of glitches and flaws that that rolled over into the videos as well. So, eh, the pluses and minuses. So over time, I got a, a microphone. Here's my big fat microphone I use to do voiceovers. I got a, uh, a clip-on mic. Here it is. And uh, one, and someone gifted me a camera. I've mentioned that before. And that actually takes a microphone because <laughs> my original didn't. Uh, trying to balance the sound so that it makes it better. Um, trying to increase the quality of the video itself so that it looks better sped up. That's an issue too. Um, so, like, I've, I've tried to improve things. I've also been more mindful of what's in the background of, of the videos that I'm doing and also in the pictures that I take. I bought some of uh, these blankets behind my head. They uh, are the ones that I use for the background for my cakes and I drape them over a chair and then I place the cake on it and then I try to put it in front of a window and I take some pictures. It works 99% of the time, <laughs> I would say, uh, to make the, them really look quite good. So. There's a few tips for you. Um, but this is all stuff I've learned over time. If you look at how long I've been a YouTuber, 
I started just before my daughter's fifth birthday, and she will be turning nine in June. It's been four years. It's been four years of making videos, and I definitely don't make enough to do it full time. And that's okay, but you have to plan on that if you want to be a YouTuber. Plan on it not making you enough money to live off of. Plan on it not making any money at all for a while. And just be patient and just have fun with it. Upload a video, leave it uploaded. Don't take it down. So that's what I've been trying to do. I have a lot of videos up on my channel. I think I'm coming up to ridiculously something like 400 and plus. How many is it? Playlist. I have a playlist for English and German, and they're pretty good. Look at that. My German playlist, 366 videos. Double that, because I also put them up in English. So uh, I'm up to almost 700, no, more than 700, 720, 730, 730 videos. So that's a lot <laughs> for something that doesn't make me enough money to live off of. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, um, so I think that this question is something a lot of people ask because they are interested in becoming a YouTuber. So my best advice to anyone interested in becoming a YouTuber is do it because you have a passion for it and not because you think you're going to make a lot of money. Do it because you want to and for no other reason. If someone's trying to push you into doing it or if you're only grudgingly doing it or if you think you're going to become rich and famous by it, the answer is 99% of the time that's not going to happen. Unless something of yours goes viral for some weird reason, it probably won't and that's okay. As long as you're still enjoying what you do, go ahead. That's my advice. Um, I hope that this was helpful for somebody, <laughs> and uh, and I hope that uh, that you understand my motivations behind what I do, as I really want everyone to realize that I really enjoy making the videos. I enjoy sharing my artistic side with you, which I don't get to share very often otherwise. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you in the next video. <laughs> Take care, everybody.